Daniel David, I am. Hello, brother. This is a this is a distress message. I am in a very bad state. Um, I'm kind of delirious. I can't sleep. Uh, they've diagnosed me with COVID. Having some problems with stop my dialysis. Honestly, bro, uh, I can't remember a time in my life where I felt like I might not make it. So prayers are important, but I've been grieving over my sins. I don't want my life to be snuffed out without speaking and accomplishing the things that I've worked for. And I really have a special um, love service to you. Um, I've lived for many years and I've observed many missions and movements and all kinds of stuff. And I've worked closely with many people. It was clear to me that you were not, in your youth, you weren't getting the love and attention that perhaps you deserved. And I've observed in detail the Christianity that you and I were raised in. Oh, Assembly of God, Episcopal, whatever, Baptist. And the one fact that people meet in a nice big meeting space and all have a happy party. Oh, we're so right. There's a problem. The, the first order of meeting is admitting faults and talking about our own personal demonic afflictions that remain. That's before communion, that's the cleansing. And it's awesome because the kids learn how to be humble and real about their downsides and their weak areas. In the discernment of the Holy Spirit, you know, I'm still messed up in this one area. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. The wise scribe knows that demons remain after salvation and that's one of the most important things that we should have a clear as a bell discernment about. So, there's a scripture that says the gospel is not for material gain and uh, and great success in the charismatic Pentecostal church environment. That was your home atmosphere, Holy Spirit business success. Uh, it's very interesting spending time with Mark and spending time with you. Both of you had 
very powerful domineering father units. And both of you have a tendency uh, to put on a show to get people's attention, to get love attention. You are, Daniel, you are a performer. And that, that performance spirit can sometimes override truth, logic, and honor and honesty. And wanting to get people together and have a nice show and all be unified and fluffy together. That is manifesting. And it's actually brushing a handful of the Jesus teachings right off the table. And I'm worried, man. I'm worried. Disobedience is dangerous. I want you to study the sins that lead to death in the former covenant. Talk to your guys. Talk to your family team about those things that would get you stoned to death in the former covenant. It's a whole list of things. Being bitter and nasty towards parents. Murder. Any involvement with the occult. The dark side powers. And I want you to go and have a look at the story of Naaman the Syrian, the guy that had leprosy. Uh, Elisha, the man of God, heals the guy. But then Elisha, Elisha's helper, Gehazi, Uh, Elisha's uh, Elisha's uh, sidekick he actually goes and takes uh, takes forbidden stuff he fools around with forbidden stuff and for the rest of his life he and his people actually have the eczema psoriasis that Naaman the Syrian had. And go to the story of David counting up his mighty men, which is a thing that kings normally do. But there are forbidden things for David because he doesn't win his wars through numbers and logic. He wins through his wars through strange Holy Spirit guidance. And as soon as he counts up his mighty men, he feels terrified. And he knows, he understands how evil that one little thing is that everybody else does. And what happens? David doesn't get hurt. But 75,000 of his people die. 75,000 of David's people die. And I'm telling you, precious Daniel, as you make your commentaries, and as Mark makes his commentaries, there's all these little bits and pieces that are from atmospheres that actually have wide open doors to destructive spirits. And Father's been saying to me, 
warn Daniel, warn him. If he doesn't tighten up, he's actually going to see his own loved ones. It's literally being invaded by infirmities, calamities, and possibly even death. This is not no little thing, man. I just want to try to help you, man. I'm an old guy, and I've seen a lot of stupid. And sometimes when I see you, it's just like, oh my gosh, this guy is like, you know, a goofy little kid bring leader that knows how to whip all of his friends into, you know, a happy party, saying, we're so right. We're so right. Um, and the level of, of pride, the lack of humility in some of your presentations just makes me very scared because I love you. And there is even an attacking of the elders that have gone on before. There is a brushing off the table. Oh, we don't have to be interested in the first era of Christianity. We have immortality in us. We don't need that stuff. And when little Felix was at my house, I didn't mention this to you, but uh, he had been he had been very uh, strange and violent with my arm where my fistula was. And okay. So I'm not doing good, man. I don't know how long it's going to last. God bless you. Thanks for being so nice to me. Oh, what I was trying to say is the place on my arm where the fistula is, where it buzzes a little bit in my arm. Um, Felix was kind of fascinated by that, but he kept poking it with things like a screwdriver and other stuff. And, uh, and Father said, there's a, there's a juvenile attack against eldership. There's a, there's a juvenile attack against eldership in Daniel's territory. And that spirit was over Felix and Poking, poking, poking. Oh, oh. So be, be deep, deeply concerned, okay? I love you. Peace.